Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for the energy variable system. Now we will eventually cover the other types of things that's not just specific to energy. We will be covering things like item tubes and liquid tubes and stuff like that too. I just haven't been able to get that all made just yet, but it will be added pretty soon. The item tubes are a little bit already added, just need uh, to do some other things with it, but we will be covering all the different types of cables and stuff. Today what we're going to be covering is the actual solar panel procedures. So there are two procedures. There is when the block is added and then there is the update tip for the solar panels. Now last part what we did was we covered the settings for all the different types of blocks for the different solar panel. Well, we covered the main one. They're all the same. So outside of the other ones being basically pointing to the regular solar panel, which is off and the ha not having a creative inventory. Those are the only differences. With what we're doing today, we want to go to triggers and then we want to go to one block added. And then we're going to create a new one right here. When you've done that, so what we want to do is specify some variables for the NBT block. Now I will include it on the project page for this particular mod, and then you guys can download it from Google Drive. That would probably be the easier way. And I'll just add it every as we progress with the tutorials. I'll add new content of the extra procedures and stuff into its own specific folders and stuff as we progress in those series. And then people can just re-download the actual download and they'll be able to get the new procedures and stuff like that. So uh, with that being said, uh, we need to create a, to run this basically on the server side so it doesn't lag the client so much. So we're gonna need a if statement, go to flow control, grab an if statement, drop that down right here. Then you want to go to your logic, grab a not, op operation and then you also want to go to world data and scroll down until you see is provided world remote and then there's a kind of like a number bracket client side number bracket so you want to add that right here so that will run it on the server side if it's with the not statement next what we want to do is specify the energy capacity of the block. Now if you're using the same system for your mod then what you want to do is for cross mod compatibility you want to use the same variable names as shown here that will allow you to properly tie in with the other mods that use it so what we're going to do is we're going to go to block procedures and we're going to grab a number mbt tag which is this one right here it's uh, the set version and then what we want to do is basically type energy and then capacity and what this will do is we'll set the total blocks capacity of how much the block can actually store in the localized block itself. So in the, our case, I've set it to 400. So we're just going to set it to 400. We also have one that says filled energy capacity. So you can just duplicate that and then you can increase the E, uppercase E, and then just type filled before it. And then you want to set this to zero. Now generally you want to set it to zero if you want the block to be empty when it's basically added. In most cases you want to do that unless you want it to have filled energy when it's been placed. The energy capacity is basically how much it will be able to actually hold in total. Now we also are calling a script from the actual mod itself. I'll cover that right now. The script name that I called is energy input output reset script we need to create that first so if we type reset energy input output script so this basically allows us to set all the variables for the block to false now by default if the variables aren't assigned to the block then the they basically won't be there so we need to tell the block to set them to false in order to do that now there's a lot of variables here energy output side north east south, west, up, down are all the output slots or output variables. Now those allow for the block to push out. Now there's also input slots which are also set to false which are energy input side north, east, south, west, up and down. Now those are to pull, allow uh, connections to other blocks that basically pull into the block. Now we are not actually pulling 
it needs to be there in order for the block that is pushing the power or items or whatever in order to say okay we can actually push into this block so these are for blocks that basically need to detect if there's an output so if it's facing a certain direction then it will say is there an input slot over here and is there an output slot on the current block and if there, that's true then what it will do is it will do its action so in our case we just want to set all these variables to false i'll make sure to provide the variables in a document in the actual procedure zip so you guys will be able to actually get all the exact variables and you can just input them all here as well as the actual procedure itself too. to create this what we need to do is go to the if statement we need to drop this down here then we need to go to the logic get another not statement go to world data and we're going to be running this on server side as well and then what we want to do is go to block procedures and scroll down until we see a light blue logic operator and then we're going to plop that down here and then we're going to basically set the energy output side and then your side direction and then you want to set this to false and then you want to do that for every side of of the block as well as the input and output so you, for the input you would just change the output particular variable so you would set this to and then input and then you would want to do that for both input and output. So I'm not going to cover how to set that up. I'll provide the, the link. It's just a matter of getting all the variable names correct and setting them to false. So that's basically what we're calling here is we're calling the procedure. So if you go to advanced and then go call procedure and then there you want the one with the X, Y, and Z. So when you have that, uh, what you can do is now set the sides that you are actually outputting the power from. So the sides that you want to push the power after you've set the reset procedure. So you want to go and search for the reset one. Now this one should be somewhere near the top, if I remember correctly. Reset energy output, so that one right there. And then what we want to do is go to the block procedures and we're going to scroll down until we'll see a light blue MBT tag, the logic one, and then we're going to specify the the sides that we want to output power from this particular block. Now if it's an input side then you want to set it to an input equals true. If it's an output side you want to allow power to go to the out through that side then you want to set it to the output side that's of that particular block. So in our case our solar panel is pushing power downwards from the current block because the solar panel has the detect sunlight above and then we're pushing it below the block so we want to set the allowed uh, side for basically pushing power to the downside of the output side right so in order to do that we go energy output side down and then that's all set up now you can move on to the other procedure and you want to basically save this procedure in your solar panel make sure to assign that to all of your solar panels that's important and what you want to do now is work on the update tick now this is where most of the procedure actually comes in to how the actual thing works a lot of it's just repetitive and uh, it will be pretty easy to discuss how it all works so Let's start with the outer side and then we'll work our way inwards. All right, so I've minimized everything so we can follow the script as we go on. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to create an if statement. And then what we want to do is we want to uh, go to logic, set not, and then we're gonna run this on the server side. So we'll do the same thing as we've done before. And then what we want to do is we want to expand that. And then what we need another if statement inside of that if statement. And we're going to grab a logic dark blue operator. And we're going to select the equal sign. And then we're going to set equal to or greater than. And then we want to go to math operator and drop this randomizer in. And we want to grab a number. And we're going to set this to 0.5. Now what this is gonna do is prevent, uh, it's basically a patch for fixing the leg issues with, because we have our ticks for our solar panels set to one. This will delay it a little bit, so it basically doesn't produce a lot of leg. This is a really easy fix for most of the system. 
Now in that particular procedure, what we have is tie is day in the provided world. So what we want to do is create another if statement. And this time we're going to do one if statement with an else statement. And then what we want to do is we're going to test if the time is day. So we want to go to world data and then we're going to scroll down until we see is, time, is day in provided world. And you're going to drop that right onto there. Next thing that you need to do is open up the else statement. So we're going to start with the else statement because it's easier to cover. And we're going to need one else statement. So we're going to go to flow control again, drop that into the else statement. And we're going to need a couple or statements as well. So we're going to set, grab a light blue operator. We're going to click on the equal sign and we're going to set or. And then we're going to go external inputs and then we're going to duplicate that two times. So it's like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to logic, grab a yellow operator. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to Minecraft components, grab a block for the light for the yellow. So we can select the block for the solar panels. And then what we want to do is go to block procedures and then we're going to scroll down until we get the block at and then we're going to drop that in here. Now we can test for our own blocks in our mod that is fine but we cannot test for other blocks from other mods. So this system will work fine as long as we're testing for our own blocks. In order to do that what we need to do is test for if the block is thundering for the thunder block then we need to test if it's raining and then we also need to test if it's clear. So we're going to duplicate this three times and then we're going to set our thundering one. We are going to set our raining one and then we are going to set our clear one, which is right here. Now, after that, what we want to do is we want to set reset the script or replace the block for me. So we want to go to our block procedures. So what you want to do next is go to your block procedures get replace block at, you're going to drop that down here, and then you want to make sure that these two blocks are checked. So keep state and keep MBT inventory. And then what you want to do is select your block off state, which should be your default solar panel. Next, what we need to do is call the reset, stri reset script again, so we can reset our variables. And then what we want to do is go to block and then we want to go and grab a light blue operator or MBT tag, pardon me. And we're going to go energy output side down. And then we want to set this to true. This will basically allow us to set our output to true if the block is currently off. And then what we want to do is we're going to minimize that for the time being. And then we're going to open up the other one. Now there's some other things that are going on here as well. There is three different conditions happening. Well, technically four, but we are testing if it's, oh, pardon me, no, just three. So we have this procedure right here. So we're testing if the block above can basically see sky, the block above the actual solar panel, and we're testing if it's not raining and not thundering. Down below, we're testing if the block above can see the sky and if it's raining, but not thundering. And then below that, what we're doing is if the block can see above, the can see the sky above and then if it's raining and thundering and we will do that right now so we need to create a if statement with two conditions we're going to drop that down here gear icon and then we're going to add if else statement right to the bottom of that and then we're going to need to grab a logic light blue operator we're going to do an and external output and we're going to duplicate that two two times we're gonna do that for all three of those particular inputs. Next, we need to get the block to see if it can see the world. So if we go here to world data, we can get the get block at XYZ can see sky. So we're gonna drop that right down here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the Y plus. So go to math, grab a operator, Y plus one and then you want to duplicate this three times. 
So one here, one here, and one here. After that, what you want to do is grab two not, uh, a not statement. You're gonna place that down on these ones right here and one right here. After that, you want to go to world data and you want to test if the world is raining and if the world is thundering. And you're gonna place one thundering here and one raining here. And then we're going to duplicate the thundering, put it on the not statement below, grab the raining and put it in the space that doesn't have the not statement. And then you're gonna duplicate those one more time and then you're just gonna be testing without the not statement. After that, we can expand the code a little bit more. So let's take a look at the first condition right here. We're going to test basically for what we did exactly down here. The only difference is we're testing for different blocks for the actual, we're testing for different blocks for the solar panels. So we can actually duplicate our script from the else statement and we can basically place that up here. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna place that here so we save some time. And now because it's clear, we are not testing if it's clear, rather if we're, it's clear, we're gonna set this to our off state. And then what we want to do is set the block to clear for the block that we're replacing. This can stay the same as the actual procedure down here is the same as well. So after we've done that, uh, we want to duplicate this one more time and we're gonna put that under our is world raining. So with that, what we want to do is we want to replace the raining one with our clear one. And then we're going to set that to our raining, replace the block with the rain one. So now we're replacing the block with the rain one. We're testing for, is it thundering? Is it clear or is the block off? And we're gonna duplicate this one more time. I'm gonna place that down here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to replace the thundering one with the raining one and we're going to replace the raining with the thundering. And then that's all set up for that particular part right here. I'm going to minimize these two just so it's easier to see. And we're going to minimize that part right here. So now that we got that part done, we can actually work on the actual procedure for pushing the power. We need to test if the field capacity of the current block is equal to or less than 200. Now this number will vary depending on how much power you're pushing into the storage of that current block. Uh, now remember that our block has a total of 400 capacity of power, so this is exactly half of the power. You do not want to go into or basically over the amount of your capacity for your actual block, so make sure that when you're actually pushing in the power then you're basically testing if it's has the right amount of power. So in our case, what we're doing is we're creating an if statement. So we'll go up here and we'll place down an if statement. And then what we'll do is we'll test if we are equal to or less than. So what we want to do is go to logic and grab a dark blue operator and then set equal to or less than, and then we're gonna need a number. So we're going to go to math, grab a number, set this to 200, because that's what we have set down here. And then we need to get the actual number variable from the block. So we're going to go to block procedures, get MBT number tag, and then we're gonna drop that right here. And then what we want to use is, is filled energy capacity, but I'm just gonna copy that variable and we're gonna place that right here. Next, what we need to do is set the variable. So we're going to go into block procedures, set MBT tag, and then we're gonna drop that here. We're gonna set it to the filled energy capacity. We're gonna remove the number temporarily, and then we're going to add a math operator, and then we're gonna place the number back, and we're gonna set this to 200, same as our space up here. Now, if we're, say if our block is 1000 uh, for capacity, we want to test, and we're adding 200, we want to subtract 
200 from the thousand of her field capacity. So this would actually be 800. If it's 800 or less, equal to 800 or less than, then we want to make sure there's enough space in the field capacity or the actual capacity of the block, which would leave 200. So we'd be adding 200. But in our case, because our block is supports 400, we only need to test if there is 200 or less for space. So next you want to duplicate the top part for get mbt tag and then you want to drop that right in here for the same block. Now that we have the block that's basically adding the field capacity to the solar panel, what we can do is we can actually move that power to any, contact, any connected block below. So that's what we're going to do is actually duplicate this two times and then we're going to place these right down here. We're going to collapse those so it's out of our way. And then what we need to do is we're going to test if the block below us, because it's y minus 1, has the input side equal to up. Because we want to test if the block below has support for input pushing down, allowing us to push into it. Then what we're doing is we're going to test if the filled energy capacity of the block below with plus 100 is less equal to or less than the filled capacity of that particular block below. Now if we can basically what this means in English is if the block below can support 100 extra points of energy capacity which is the filled capacity here we we know that the filled capacity is basically how much the block can actually store so if we're basically detecting if the filled capacity of the current block below us plus 100 and then we're seeing if that e that number equals out to below the equal to or below the field capacity if that's true then what we're doing is we're going to move that power over to the new block and then we're going to remove the block the power from the current block up here and then we're going to go and grab a else statement we're going to drop that here and then we need an and statement so we're going to go to logic drop a and statement in here and then go to external input outputs and then what we want to do is grab a operator a light blue one and then we're going to get the logic variable right here and for the block and then we're going to set this to the side below so we want to test if the side below is energy input side up and then we're going to go up here paste that in and then what we're going to do is we're going to set this to true if that's true then what we want to do is test if the block we also want to test if the block below so we're going to remove the y we're going to add a math operator, set minus, y minus, and then we want to set this to 1. Next what we want to do is test for the block power, so we're going to add this here. We're going to go equal to or less than, and then what we want to do is we want to create a math operator. I'm going to place that down right here. We're going to get the block filled capacity of the current block and then we're going to plus and then we want to set this to 100 like so and then what we want to do is duplicate this again this time what we're doing is we're testing for the energy capacity of the current block so we want to test for the block below this so we're going to remove the Y and we're going to drop the Y below here and we're going to do the same right over here as well. So if those conditions are true, then what we want to do is move the power. So we're going to just duplicate this right here. And then what we're going to do is rather than have it push the power into the same block, we're going to update the Y coordinates for both of these variables. This one right here for the Y and this one right over here and we're going to send 100 power over. Next, what we need to do is we need to basically duplicate the filled capacity up 
from the top one that we did and we're going to drop that here and we're going to subtract 100 and that's all we need to do for the top one so we can actually minimize these and the only thing that you need to worry about is the power that we're actually outputting now for the solar panel our power that we're actually outputting is so when we scroll down to the bottom what we can see is when it's raining what's happening is we're testing if there's 50 power so if there's 50 power then what we're going to do is push 50 power into the block below if it's thundering then we're going to push 25 so let's update the last two parts right here we're just going to duplicate this script we're going to plop that down right here we're going to change the 100 to 50 for raining and we're going to set this to 50 and we're going to set this one right here to 50 as well and then what we're going to do is duplicate this again and then we're going to put that right down at the bottom one and we're going to set this one to 25 and then we're going to set this to 25 and we're going to set this one to 25 and that's all the script for the actual solar panel i'll make sure to provide all this in the actual download as well for the solar panel itself so if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out and i'll see you in part four